Hi, welcome to Observations. Welcome to Observations with the Palm Coast Observer. I'm Brian McMillan, Executive Editor. And today I'm continuing in, in a series of interviews with faith leaders in the Flagler County community. And I have with me today the Reverend Bob, Goolsb Bob Goolsby of St. Thomas Episcopal Church. Welcome, Bob. Thank you, Brian. Thank you for joining me. Um, Bob became the rector of the Episcopal uh, congregation in 2018 in Palm Coast. Right. So my first question to you is, if someone comes to you and says he has lost his faith, what do you, what do you say? Well, usually uh, after a conversation with someone who, who, who's, who's claimed that, they've probably been through some kind of trauma or some sort of loss, um, and uh, they respond in a way that, that, that would be probably normal for all of us. Mm -hmm. Um, I would encourage them that, that it's, it's at that, those, those darkest times and those most isolated times or the most painful times that God walks with us and, and dwells with us and actually um, uh, takes joy in being part of our lives at times like that. Um, in terms of, of losing faith in God altogether, usually uh, the, the response is, tell me about this God you don't believe in, and I probably don't believe in that God either. So if they feel punishment or uh, or or desertion from this God that they've come to believe in, and there's pain associated with that. It's usually just a, a um, it's usually just a, a, a belief that probably isn't uh, helpful in their in their time. A misconception, possibly. Perhaps. Yeah. yeah. Um, people must come to you with troubles often. So, what happens if someone comes to you with financial problem and they're asking for help? What do you? What what kind of principles guide you when that when that happens? Well, actually, um, I, I I've never really given people advice financially. If someone comes to us who ha who is in need, um, we point them to the right social agency. Now, the church is not a social service agency, so we do try to point people in the right direction mm -hmm. so they can get the help they need. But we we will immediately help someone if it's uh, if it's appropriate and if it's and if it's um, if it if it's appropriate on our end and if we're able to help them, but we're not, we're not really capable to, to bail someone out of significant financial yeah. distress, but we can help them along the way. Mm -hmm. Very good. Um, how can churches connect with teenagers in 2021? Oh my gosh! Your eyes just got uh, wide there. Well, yeah, because that is a fantastic question. <laughs> you told um, me you told me just now that you have Snapchat. So yeah, right, right. Well, I have Snapchat, but I don't look at it too often. TikTok, I don't look at it too often. <laughs> uh, I don't connect with a lot of teenagers, except maybe family members once in a while through those uh, social media platforms. But um, I think the church really has work to do in inspiring young people like teenagers uh, to be. To be in a relationship with God in such a way that God is not another authority figure in their lives, but rather an ally mm. and maybe a partner in their in their um, in their discerning uh, years. I mean, really, they're they're discovering who they are and they're they're finding their identity, and that God is with them in that walk, and that God is with them in that in that discernment and realization, uh, rather than another judge or disciplinarian over them. Did you feel like when you were a teenager that you found a, a relationship with God? I did. I grew up in the church. I was an acolyte or an altar boy, as, as the Catholics would say, uh, as, as I grew up as, as a young boy. Um, and I always, I never felt that, that God was a burden or some sort of authority figure over me watching every step I made and, and, and seeking to take corrective action. Uh, rather, God was just a... Um, actually, God was some, something through the church, through the lens of the church that, that I found comfort in and, and found belonging in. Mm -hmm. Your father was a police chief. That's right. right. So how, what did you learn from him? He was a police chief the last few years of his career. He had a, probably a 35-year career in law enforcement. Um, I didn't grow up with him, uh, so I didn't learn a lot in terms of mm -hmm. uh, immediately uh, right. what it was like to live with a police officer. But um, uh, I he he was someone who who cared very much for the community that he served he was involved with uh, dare the dare program years ago that he was very proud of and i think he helped a lot of kids and i probably learned that community involvement and a little bit of the political process too um, i probably got from him in terms of caring for others and and uh, wanting uh, equity and justice for people 
So that leads, I guess, to the next question, because you mentioned that in a letter that you wrote um, to the sheriff and, you know, we published in The Observer. That's right. After uh, June 2020 um, with the uh, Black Lives Matter protests in Palm Coast Parkway. And you were out there marching um, in that park protest. Why did you participate in that? You know, that was, uh, well, I, I felt drawn to, and, and that was a last minute thing. I just, somebody had just said, hey, watch out for the traffic on Palm Coast Parkway. There's a Black Lives Matter march. I said, well, wait a minute. I shouldn't be ch stuck in traffic. I should be in the march. <laughs> so um, I showed up and mm. I, I got to meet a few people and, and uh, specifically two pastors that were in the area that we marched together. I felt, um, I have a congregation that's probably at least 50% people of color. And uh, to represent them was something important to me. I think that, um, I think there is inequity and there is prejudice and racism in our communities. And I think the church needs to have a face and voice against those uh, sorts of um, issues that infect our hearts and minds and our outlook towards others. Mm -hmm. um, what is the Book of Common Prayer and what does it mean to you personally? The Book of Common Prayer is uh, aptly named for uh, the, the book of worship that we use in the Episcopal Church. Is and it used in any other churches? It's used throughout the Anglican Communion, okay. which would be the Church of England um, and, and churches all around the country, Church of Canada, uh, I can go on and on. And we all have Books of Common Prayer and they have a liturgy or a form of, of several forms of worship in them anywhere from morning prayer and morning uh, devotions to evening devotions, uh, Sunday worship, uh, Holy Communion, it, it goes on and on, baptism. Um, and they have a common thread in them, which means that they have, we have uh, prayers that are, uh, that are identical or similar around the world. Uh, so the Book of Common Prayer holds us together that we pray in the same way, we come to know God in a similar way, yet the freedom to come to know God in our own personal way. Um, and it is just that, a book of common prayer that holds us in common, that brings us together in, in a global way. And what does it mean to me? Yeah. Oh, it, it's, it's, it's very formative to me. I find it very comforting. We have uh, several prayers that date back even to the middle 1500s uh, that are still in that book, of course, updated in the language. Um, and uh, it, it speaks to me when we do a, a community service with our congregation or with a larger group, uh, say with our diocese or in the national church. When we pray together using the words in the Book of Common Prayer, it brings me home, it brings me comfort and familiarity in my faith. Um, the Episcopal Church, I just learned this, trying to prepare for the, this uh, conversation, but it, it began after the American Revolution, um, right? Because the Anglican right. Church had a loyalty oath to England, which wasn't very popular among revolutionaries at the time. That's right. So it split off, and uh, it just made me wonder, does the church still feel particularly American today in some way? It does, but just like our politics uh, nationally, we, we are friends with England and we are, uh, we are part of- <laughs> Not still revolutionary. No, no, we're not right. trying to, to be enemies with them or break away from them, but rather we are, we've grown closer to the Church of England. We're one of their, um, we are under what we call the Archbishop of Canterbury. Uh, we're one of their, one of the churches in the Anglican Communion. We're the American, we're basically the American part of the Church of England mm -hmm. uh, in the Episcopal Church. But yeah, we were born out of that uh, revolutionary period and uh, we had to do some things creatively because we didn't have loyalty to the crown in the 1500s. So we had to find, or I'm sorry, in the 1700s and um, we began in the 1500s. Yeah. But in the 1700s, we had to find our own way uh, during that revolution, revolutionary period. Mm -hmm. But yes, we've, we've changed just like we have nationally. Um, Church membership in most denominations is in decline. Why do you think that is? I think people are overprogrammed. I think they have a, a lot going on in their personal lives. Um, there used to be, additionally, there used to be uh, this sort of um, need to be socially connected to the church, number one. Uh, number two, there might have been some guilt associated that if you didn't nurture a relationship with God that bad things might happen to you and people are figuring out, well, maybe that's not the case. Um, but I think mostly, um, uh, I, th I think people have so much going on in their lives that fitting one more thing in is difficult for them. And, and some churches try to be a third place for people, you know, work, home, and then that third place. But uh, typically third places now are, or might be the, the local bar or the local restaurants or some other sort of uh, 
community community little gathering. League, little league soccer fields. Could be the soccer field. Could be the, uh, the 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 games that we play and the and the uh, the sports that we're involved in or some other kind of civic activity. But we find. But if you if you look there, we are drawn to community, and uh, it's the kind of community that we need to form in the church needs to be um, always reformed and and updated and and cared for. How do churches help the community in 2021? If there are all these other options for people to right. kind of be socially connected, right. what does a church specifically do? I think what churches specifically need to do these days is partner with those organizations that help the homeless, help the sheltered, uh, help those who need food. Um, not every church can be a shelter. Not every church can be a food pantry, for instance. But we do have those um, those those organizations here in Palm Coast and Flagler County and churches need to partner with them so they can serve uh, those in need in the most effective way. Mm -hmm. um, my last question is in the Gospel of John, uh, Jesus says, and this is life eternal, that they might know thee the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. So do you, you use the King James Version? In we do not. Okay, I mm -hmm. thought, I looked that up and I thought that was, we use, right. we use that in the church that I attend, but, um, so you're familiar with that with that verse, maybe. This is, uh, life eternal is to know God and Jesus Christ. So mm -hmm. as the rector of this church, how do you feel someone does come to know God? Well, read that scripture to me one more time. Uh, and this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. It's John 17, 3. Okay. Um, so... Well, the the, uh, the church is, by definition, the community of or the body of Christ, the community that that Jesus create, created when he uh, when he lived, and uh, the one that he sustains through the Holy Spirit. So we are the body of Christ in the world, and the church. Um, the church I've always described as a uh, as a um, as a lens to see the divine. So as the body of Christ, as we live into our beliefs, which is to help the poor and to uh, be an advocate for, for the voiceless and, to, and to, give, um, to give glory to God in his creation by caring for it and by loving one another and, and uh, being present with one another, the church helps us to focus on that and become the, the hands and feet of Christ in the world. Very good. Well, thank you, Reverend Goolsby, for uh, thank joining you. me. And thanks for joining me on observations and uh, we'll see you next time.